Okay, welcome you guys back to the creative season with Melissa. So I thought today what we would do is I've got all these beautiful spring flowers and we're going to, I've sketched out a simple um, vase that has carnations and a Ger Gerber daisy in it. And so if you wanted to pause and sketch out what I have, I will let you know. I explained this more in the Beautiful Blooms workshop, but a lot of times when I buy flowers uh, or am putting together a design, I will you know, take a few things and really figure out, okay, what do I want to focus on? I'm not going to paint all the flowers in the bouquet. What, what creates a really beautiful painting? What's going to be my focal point? So I've got a Gerber daisy here. Gerber daisy over here that we're looking at sideways. And I'm often looking at distinguishing features, right? So distinguishing features on the Gerber daisy, you notice here how on the side we have these really interesting stems that hold all the, the petals in place. And I think they're beautiful. We're gonna get the shape. We're also gonna see how the shape, the, the fans out, the petals do. We have this really nice thick stem that the longer it goes down, you have a yellow green and a darker green up here. So we're gonna keep that in mind as those distinguishing features. The other thing I wanna point out, let me just put the petal this way too with um, our Gerber daisies, is you notice there's a pretty big ring on the inside right in there. And you have a little dab of like green, yellow in the middle that's the same color as out here, right? So this is really a study of this lovely Gerber daisy. We're gonna make these nice orange petals here. So I've got that, I'm actually gonna put them back. I'll put it back over here. And then I have some carnations too. And carnations, you know, looking at their distinguishing features. So on this one, notice how this, this carnation that's not all the way open, we have the green stems that are coming up. So I got that right over here in this one, a little bit in this one. We have, I wanna show you some another carnation here. Another stem that has multiple buds on it and make sure it doesn't drip on us here. So on this one, looking at these distinguishing features, look at almost, you have a, a trumpet that comes up, right? So as I'm looking and sketching, I'm making these almost trumpet-like features around here when I sketch them out. There's also a lot of different shapes and sizes. So I also have done that. These are my background flowers while the Gerber daisies are the star of the show. But you know, background support is, are really important. They really give a lot of depth and uh, personality to a painting. You notice too with the stems that they're a little bit knobby. We've got the little bumps coming out here. So we'll also include that as another distinguishing feature. Also these stems are thinner. So those are the ways we can make our flowers really show them off and their distinct characteristics. They don't need to look exactly like they do in real life, but to create the distinguishing features. And of course I left my paint brushes over here, so I'm gonna grab those and bring them back over. I am gonna be spending a lot of time with my number seven round today. And if you saw the video before this one, I went over and some of my favorite um, supplies. So I'm just going to get everything around me, move my water over here. I've got my palette. Now I think what we're going to do today is we're going to start with, I've got green here and I believe this is, I've got my permanent green or the hooker's green is one of my favorite greens. I'm going to start with that. <clears throat> actually, I take that back. I'm actually going to start with some yellow first. I'm going to start with the yellow in my stems and then add a little bit of green to it. So I've got a cadmium yellow light over here and I'm going to go in with my Gerber daisy stems and even in over here because they had more of a yellow green and I actually want to add green over the yellow because I want them to blend. And then there's a stem for the Gerber daisies. And I may have to come back and do some erasing of my sketches, but I won't let that bother me now. Just coming a little bit closer, you can see I know that my pencil can be a little bit faint sometimes. So we've got, those are our two Gerber daisies, and now I'm gonna go for the green for the other stems, because they are not as yellow green. So I'm going to, again with that tip of the seven, even though it's a seven, right, it's a little bit of a larger brush, because they're such a lovely fine tip, it's really doing these lines nicely, which I love. It's one of the reasons I love a really high quality round brush because I can use it for a lot of different things. I don't need necessarily a smaller brush. I can still do a lot of this smaller work. Now you'll notice today I am, you know, we're, we're being a little bit more precise. I do love to do splattering and do a lot of free stuff. And sometimes, especially when I'm doing some like more of a flower study, 
I come back to working a little bit more precise because I always feel too that if you know the rules, it's a lot easier to break them, right? Or you know how to break them to your benefit to do what you want to do. So coming back to doing some flower studies is a really great way of just refining skills of really working on my observation too of noticing things. I think no matter what you like to create, if you love to create, you know, uh, baking, um, wonderful foods, if you're a gardener, whenever we're creating, the more we observe and notice detail and um, using all of our senses, the better we really become in our craft and the better we can encourage others and bless them, right? With whatever that we're doing. I know we do it a lot of times for ourselves, but there's such a a flowing out of ourselves with all of our creative gifts. Ultimately, I believe they're meant to bless other people. Okay, so I'm gonna come on down here and do and what I normally do if you find your, your, yourself wavering, I kind of keep my my bottom of my hand on the, on the uh, table and I move the whole thing down. That might help you if you notice that there's some wiggling going on. I know how frustrating that can be. All right. And so again, I have pretty light. I'm gonna do a couple more out here. If you feel like I, I want space, but I don't want too much space, right? I'm gonna leave this area open to light for right now. I think though I am, I do want this guy to have another guy coming off of him. There we go. And that's lovely. I am gonna drop some green over here now. Remembering the points, right? I'm gonna just bring it back that Gerber Daisy again. The points on the side. So if you notice that Gerber Daisy has all those lovely points, so we're gonna pull those points in. And I am going to let, just bring the watercolor on the bottom part and let that color kind of combine together. And this one I might go right down on the middle. I may, it may have already dried a bit much. Oh hey, there we go, you start to see it. Don't get impatient, sometimes it just takes a minute for everything to start moving together. Can go down here a little bit. There we go. A nice smooth stock. All right, so that's kind of our first layer of green here, and that's lovely. I'm actually gonna let that dry. Let's go do our vase, right? So, what color do we want our vase? I think I'm actually gonna make this a nice. Um, I'm gonna put a blue. I think a blue is gonna be very complementary to the orange, right? The orange that we're gonna be using for the Gerber daisies. All right, so now with the blue, when we're planning our vase, I can't show you the vase with the way the camera is angled, um, but if you're thinking of the lights coming down and there's gonna be some glare right over here, so we don't want to just paint it solid colors. We wanna make sure that there is a sense of light. So I'm not gonna paint the whole thing. In fact, I'm gonna intentionally pretend, okay, I've got that light shining there, so I'm gonna leave part of it white, add a little bit more water, and go around to the edges here. I will be careful when you're going around the lid of the jar. I am pretending that this is a mason jar, so almost like you're kind of an everyday, right? Nothing too fancy. This is your everyday bouquet. What I mean, an everyday luxury is what I love to call flowers. Nothing too fancy though. This is just brightening up your week, your day. Maybe you brought it over to someone's house. Maybe you're a flower gardener. I think that is fantastic. I often talk about I cannot wait to have a home with a garden so I can get back and do things in the dirt. My mom just bought a bunch of planters for outside her on her balcony. I thought that's a good idea. I might have to do that. Maybe I'm gonna try a tomato plant on my balcony this summer. I get quite a bit of light. I've done sometimes I'm on the third floor though, so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to drag all that dirt up here. But you know, I think it might be worth it. I would love to hear if you paint from your own flowers or maybe you have your own flower garden, vegetable garden, do you paint or do, do you also, do you give them away? I'm just wondering, do you bring them into your house? Do you give your flowers away? Do you dry them? Okay, I, I'm so curious, do you press them? Do other creative projects? There's so many things you can do with flowers. It's just, they're so versatile. So going down here again, I'm not, in fact, I might just leave it like that. Okay, so we're gonna come back in most likely, we're gonna have to do shadowing and whatnot right on the table that it's sitting on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that there. I'm gonna put a little bit more paint down here because I know that's where some shadowing is. Also, I'm gonna put a, a bit more paint on the lip, right under that lip to again show the, 
the depth there. We're gonna just let that be. That's giving me enough time now for that green to dry. So now I can start putting in some orange. I just wanted to be really, really careful that the orange and the green didn't blend. Sometimes it's not a big deal. We can always go back and fix it. However, green and orange tend to turn brown, which is we do not want brown in our flowers, right? So now what I will tell you, we are gonna have to put a little bit of green in this. So what am I gonna do here? I should have done that at the beginning of Melissa. So I'm sorry if you're painting along with me, I apologize. If you're just watching this, when you do come back, make sure to put that little green in at the beginning. And I'm just gonna dab it in because it's actually, there's quite a bit of yellow. So I'll come back with some yellow. I'm just gonna do a little bit of green there. And now we're gonna go in and start. Let's look at our flower again. Always going back to our source when we're doing our flower studies. And it's nice and orange, but you see there's yellow in here. And I even see, I really see a lot of yellow. When you look, especially if I turn it underneath here, right? You've got yellow, lots of yellow and orange. So I think we can really play with both of those colors here. Now I am gonna start out too. You'll notice too, the other thing I wanna point out is the shape of the petals. If you've done like my sunflower videos, sunflowers will maybe curve up, but see how these are almost pretty perfect. Almost it comes up to a little tip. And see too how you almost have this divot in the petal. I hope that's showing up nicely. The light's pretty good today. So you see the divot like right here, there's a nice divot. So we'll come back and do some, adding some darker colors to show those divots, those distinguishing features. So we're about 11 minutes into our painting, so not bad, right? We're actually moving along really, really nicely. I am using a cadmium red orange for this initial, um, for this initial painting. And I'm gonna go right through here. And I am gonna just start outlining. Now I like to keep these videos under 20 minutes long, so I know I won't be able to finish with you today but I'm hoping that you could your start on the, your own beautiful flower study. We'll get a lot of it done. Also, I will end up doing some detail work. That's gonna be really, really lovely. Um, and you, if you wanted to see the full thing, usually it takes me with a flower study, maybe about an hour. And I do, I do have a course, Beautiful Blooms. If you're watching this in April, 2021, it's actually offered for free. You can certainly grab it. I and I will put the link down below. If you're watching after, it is a $29. So it is a full workshop. I call it a, a weekend workshop because you can do it in a weekend. The class itself, itself takes 50 minutes. That does not include the time, of course. I stop recording and let it dry. But I really love the sense of creating something with it and getting that win, right? Finishing a project. I love to finish a project. And sometimes for our bigger projects, you know, it, it takes time and we get distracted by all that life throws at us. So I love offering a course, like a mini, a weekend workshop is what I call them again, that, that shows you how to create a court, a, a, um, a bouquet all in a weekend. And I also show you too how to design your own, just as like we're talking about today of really looking at those dis distinguishing features, figuring out how many flowers I want, also figuring out, you know, this guy over here, he he wasn't he actually wasn't shaped like that, but I wanted to get that side view because I just think that side view is so so fun, and um, it really just shows off another side of the flower. So again, I'm just adding, I'm actually gonna go back and get some yellow because on the guy that, if you notice, the yellow was showing up a little bit more. Oh, but I've got some green, that's okay though. So we're gonna put some yellow in there. Now, this is all the background, but you'll notice that when we put the guy, little guy out, you can still see some of the, the outer rim of the other side, right? So I'm gonna keep, create that sense too with the very edge of my watercolor brush. And again, I'm still using the same one. I haven't switched watercolor brushes. And I'm gonna come out here and, oops, that's a little bit, that's a lot of paint. And I'm just doing some of those edges. Just to remind myself, that's the outer part, Melissa. So when I come back and do these, these other ones in here, we'll create a different color, to create that sense of differentiation. Coming back to this one now, letting them dry a little bit. I'm gonna come back and put in some more. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, how are we gonna create this sense of that 
deepening. I'm actually going to add a little bit of the blue to the orange, the same blue. I'm going to put it in the orange and come back in and it's going to be using those colors. They're all going to sing together because we're using the same palette. All right, now I am going to, in the middle, if you notice the middle, it is a lot of those seeds and I am going to just start dipping the, my brush all over here. And we don't have to make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those dots we are leaving some white so that creates this helps to create the sense of depth put some yellow in the middle we'll end up putting some of the orange because there's a ring of orange inside after it dries okay now what do I want to do next I actually want to deepen I'm going to add a little bit of blue the blue I use down here to the green because I want to deepen the green over here and just start to create that sense of depth and then the differentiation remember the Gerber daisies they are just really that that lovely yellow green while the carnations are a darker color and we'll get that guy down here and I'm not mixing my green with my orange I also find that moving around really helps me to keep an eye on how everything is dancing together and then is there anything that I forgot like I'm like okay that's right I wanted to have a bud over here so we're gonna put a stem coming right off here and over here and using that tip of my brush okay I'm gonna put a little bit of green in there oops but not too much okay now that looks really good now with the carnations they were white but you know, it can be a little bit challenging to paint white. So I'm thinking I could do a very, very, very light blue. I'm trying to keep a similar color palette going on here, being limited with my colors. I might end up changing this. That's even a bit dark, I think. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. And I'm almost giving the sense I might even, I know this is a little bit different, add a little bit of Payne's Gray to create this sense of shadow very a very light blue almost almost just the shadow of the flower if that makes sense I would like to again they're the they're the support they're not our are not our star but that support is super important so coming over here I am hoping sometimes I don't watch the screen coming up there and if you thought it was a bit dark, like over here, I'm just gonna move that same paint and just move it around. Move it on the bottom. I'm not painting in the entire carnation. I'm just going around it. And even with this one, you almost have a sense of that bud, the shadow of it. You, often if you look at shadowing, it looks a little bit gray, a little bit purple, right? There's so many different colors. I think I'm gonna add another bud right over here. We're always thinking to odd numbers, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's great. I've got seven there. If I want to do one here, eight, I have to do one somewhere else. Because it, I, everything in nature, everything just typically works out where there is odd numbers. So we want to make sure there's, especially with those two Gerber daisies, I need to odd, I'm making sure that we all end up odd. So I'm going to add another one. You know, let's go ahead and put one right here. And I'm gonna make this one a little bit more open. I always love flowers. So many of them look as they open up, they're reaching up to the sun, right? All right, and carnations too. I'm gonna to pull it out again so you can see it. They almost have like this little dance that they do where they're opening up and they've got like their skirt, right? And then they open up to the, 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 the flower part. You don't have to do every single petal. I think that's part of the intimidation of painting flowers as we look at, you know, there's dozens of petals, but we don't have to paint a dozen petals. We are just painting a, some of the petals and giving that impression through depth, through shadowing of creating that sense of the flower, that the whole flower. And I'm gonna bring that guy and just have him attached to right, this guy right here. Ew, I got some green in there, but that's okay. We're just gonna let that go. Okay, lovely. Now we're gonna come back here. And where are we, 19 minutes? Okay, very good. So this is lovely. I hope you're getting a sense of how doable this is. 
It's again, I like to, to have a big thick focus point where even the base looks almost kind of short. I knew with this paper, I'm like, okay, how am I gonna do this? But I like, I like something to grab your attention. So having a really big flower, that's I think just so much fun. Okay, now I, I do wanna show you how I'm going to add some blue to the orange and what that's gonna look like. I know that always sounds so very odd, but using those co those colors, just having a couple of colors and using them together, um, it just, you can create the most imaginative paintings with just a couple of colors, because look what we did here. With, with the exception of a tad bit of paint gray in that blue, we basically have used yellow, orange, green, and blue, that's it. And honestly, if you wanted to, I guess we could have really used, created the, the green from the, this blue and the yellow. We could have even gone four colors. So I've got a little bit of blue to create that divot, and I'm just going to add in some color there using the tip. You'll notice because it's wet and because the, the paper buckles, we sometimes it, it'll just create its own little waterway of where it wants to go, and I just let it. I don't get mad about that. Now some of the divots, if you want to, you can just leave them white. But all of a sudden you see where we have that, that depth. I'll move it a little bit closer so you can see where I'm adding the dark. I'm not adding it everywhere. I'm just adding it some places and on some petals. And I'll end up letting this dry and then coming back in and adding some more orange. The other thing I'm going to do with this too, it's not quite dry in here. I'm a little bit nervous that if I go in there, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> so we'll just come over here and I'm actually just going to let that go a little bit deeper on that side and just blend in with that yellow. And I can always lighten it up if I think it's too much. And that is a little bit dark, but I am going to let that dry and then go back in with another shade of orange. And this is coming along really really lovely. So again, I'm going to let that dry because if I don't, it does get to start to become a little bit of a muddy mess and we don't want that. I'll add just a little bit of green down here, the lighter green for this stem. I do want, I think I want a little bit thicker for the Gerber Daisy. So I'll have that coming out right here and I've got a little bit of paint coming, but that's okay. So we'll let that go there. And these guys are just in here to show off their beautiful stems on the side. Lovely. I think this is turning out really, really nicely. I really like where it's going. And again, when I come back, we'll just go ahead and add in another layer. We'll let this completely dry though. And I am so excited to paint with you today. Again, if you want to check out that beautiful Blooms course, it's about an hour long, just a few minutes shy of an hour. And I talk a little bit more, or quite a bit more, on how to really create your own floral study, how to create any sort of um, take a bouquet, and look at the most essential parts to create your own bouquet. Um, and it's really, it's really a lot of fun. So do check that out if you're interested. I will see you back here soon. Have a great day.